moves up and down amidst the trembling reeds. At first, it just looks like trash. But if you look closer... That over there must be the boy class you told us about. The one she hid her passport in. We should... You lift the boy out of the water without much effort. It's not tied to anything. The cords dangling from the bottom appear to have been cut. The number 11 has been written on the yellow plastic. It hasn't been in the water for very long, but it's already discolored and slimy with silt. A latch holds it close, but only just barely. The brittle metal of the latch has cracked. Simple construction. Very unsafe. There's something in there, splashing around. It smells like you would expect it to smell. A concentrated version of the coast. Salt, industrial slop and decay. The water this side of the peninsula is cleaner. Actually, smells a little salty. scientist is that the police why are the police here don't worry Gary I'll handle it to what do I owe the pleasure that's sarcasm he takes no pleasure from your appearance oh no it's all right I'm just busy what's this about hey. Of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken, and we can't go all the way around the 881. You broke the water lock with a motor carriage? But there was a billboard in the canal. Not a vehicle. It said Samaran Butter. Why? Insane. Yes, okay, good. But you said the water lock is fixed now. So we can go back. Did he say we can go back now? Yes, Gary. We can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we're going. Which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds laying traps for it. Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect, it disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. Awful lot of reeds around, aren't there? And I suspect it may have also developed other specialised techniques to protect itself from predators, or scientists, in our present case. It's my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defences 
that allow it to interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. But I cannot describe how these defences work, much less how they evolve, without studying a live specimen. Yes, it makes perfect sense. You're beginning to suspect there's something paranatural about this phasmid. I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One known species of phasmid, called the Megaphasmodea zoensis, is about the size of a grown man's forearm. So, uh, typical rookie assumption. Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. Even simply catching a glimpse of the Insulindian phasmid would be the apex of my, of any, cryptozoologist's career. But to study it and its defences, find out how it stayed hidden so long. Very little, I'm sorry to say. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third hand accounts. Not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, if there's no proof of its existence, how do you know it's real? I know it's real. It's clear that his obsession with the phasmid is driven by something more than the pure pursuit of scientific advancement. By which I mean, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulindian phasmid is more than mere superstition. Yes, the most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. That's what brought us to Martin A's specifically. It's the first credible sighting in several decades. Admittedly, it's an unusual location for this species, but with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. He means asexual reproduction. The females of the species don't need to mate to produce viable eggs. This makes it easier for a species with a small population to survive. Nature does not concern herself with ethical propositions. As a scientist, my interest is strictly dispassionate. Well, they may not look impressive, but Lena designed them quite cleverly, so I'm sure they'll do the trick. Yes. Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and, having eaten its fill, can get back out. At least, that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution, but we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exoskeleton. Locusts. Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores, of course. But we've hypothesized that the Insulindian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a tiny, chittering swarm. A meat-eating stick insect? Does it pretend to be the reeds as part of its ambush behavior? This seems unlikely. Thank you for your opinion. We have also included plant material in the traps to satiate your skepticism. Not a big fan of skepticism, this one. They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis, using locusts as bait, accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams, which use plants. We have given this some thought. The traps do seem to be deftly and thoughtfully constructed. It's clear the cryptozoologist's wife knows what she's doing. Yes, what? By Woman. You mean my wife, I assume. I will return to her. I can't leave before we finish with these traps. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. 
Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Come on. She wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting. On record. One of only four this century. And it's hers. Yes. That's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. <laughs> Needless to say, you must ask her about the mysterious phasmid. Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the Phasmid were to starve while we were sipping tea at the hostel? He's dead set on this. Hmm. I could go for some trap setting. I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. Well, be that as it may, I'd really appreciate the help. There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula. By the boathouses there. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there. On your way to the old radio tower, after the church. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed by a concrete slab, a big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them, you should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still, better safe and stupid than sorry. That seems like a lot. Do we really have time for this extracurricular venture? Even relative to examining a weak old corpse, I'm not sure mucking about in the reeds qualifies as fun. But have it your way, detective. If you think it's important, you have been right before. Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. He's not comfortable with the possibility that you'll claim the find, but he's lying about this even to himself. That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the side of you. It's quite potent. Will last you about a week. <laughs> I hope you're not paying this. He dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. It is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. Right. Which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Finally! Someone's talking sense. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time.
and a cave salamander from Hugo Grad, who is, honestly, quite unremarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more so even than the public. With cryptids, most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. Indeed. If our expedition is successful, every paper in the world will report on it. From Revachol to Dushan too. It will be a zoological miracle. He has clearly done his math on this. There is no surprising him or swaying his opinion. Yes? All right. What cryptids precisely? I usually discuss these things with specialists, so I don't know what... We would have to discuss. He wants to say, but decides against it. Since you've offered to help, you need to ask him about specific cryptids. Cryptids you've heard about from Lena, or his friend Gary. He won't just talk. A willow person. It's a long story. One non-specialist would find rather dull. Willow people? Not at all. They're not people, really. Some argue they aren't really animals, as they seem to have evolved directly from trees. They're very, very thin, almost flat in fact, and can camouflage themselves easily, wrapping themselves around trees and blending in with the tree bark. In that way, they're not too dissimilar from the phasmid we're looking for here. You probably have. Gary and I painted an entire grove's worth of trees in slow drying paint. It was a bright lavender colour. I was hoping one of the willow people would get paint on it and not be able to camouflage itself. After waiting in hiding for hours, I saw a figure slip from one of the trees. A lavender shadow dashing through the grove. I chased it with a knit. Not very elegant. You can't be elegant in the field. And, well, it was faster than me. A lavender shadow. I know you think we were snacking on funny mushrooms. It's easier to mock someone than to admit that the world might be more interesting than you've imagined. Furthermore, I am not saying it was a confirmed sighting. I'm painfully aware of what goes into verifying such things. There is a serious possibility that I saw a squirrel or a trick of the light. I am my own harshest critic. He makes it a real point here to sound falsifiable. Confirmed. It's 100% verified and meets all the standards of an authentic cryptid sighting. I'm guessing you heard about it from Lena. The kind green ape is one of her favourites. We travelled to South Safra to look for it once. Gary and I got stuck in a rainstorm though, and had to spend most of our time there in a little village. The search was fabulously unsuccessful, but the people were very nice. I'm glad they didn't understand what Gary was saying about them. What? South Safra? They're just on a different rung of the ladder, Morale. I had no problem with them. Really? You kept complaining about how dirty everything is. We digress. They're a nascent culture. I just didn't feel comfortable. And let's change the topic, okay? Talk about your critters or whatever. Yes, back to cryptozoology. You don't want to sow disagreement between friends. No offence, officer, but I'm not much of a pedagogue. I don't know what I would have done if Lena hadn't persuaded me to go back to field research. You should ask her if you want interesting stories. Me? I'm not a people person, unless you haven't noticed. And I don't make a good lecturer. My strength lies in field work and persistence. This is a gruff man who's been ridiculed too many times to feel comfortable talking about what's dearest to his heart. It's in his shoulders, his face, 
is everything. By all means. <laughs> I'm Gary. Very generous of you to help us out, officer. Yellow man. I mean, officer. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man. Interesting. This is something to ask him about after a little probing first. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. I like nature. Just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Oh, I've been tempted. But someone has to stay strong for Revacol. He pronounces Revacol with a hard K, unlike other people. Serious question time. This man is no innocent. No one is. I like to pronounce it the hard way. The old way. The Vespertine way. He winks at you, trying to relay some hidden message. Inviting you to mispronounce it too, perhaps. It's odd. It's a secret right. A very fringe nationalist handshake, probably. But still, he's definitely one of us. Longs for the old days, the old ways. He's likely to know how to turn back time. Ask him. Do I know how to turn back time? Is that a trick question? The lieutenant crosses his arms and turns to look at you. You'd better be going somewhere case-related with this. He gave you a question for an answer. Must mean... The answer's obvious. Phew. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, of course there are theories out there. Well, there's a very interesting cryptid known as the Semper Ma, and a certain tribe of ancient kits who practice digital castigation. Though, frankly, I don't know how compelling you'll find that theory. And then you hear rumors that the Seolites possess technology that actually lets them move through time like it's a corridor. Back and forth, you see. Cryptids, actually. It's a so-called colonial animal. Presenting as a large singular body when in actuality... It's a congregation of tiny organisms working in unison. It's found in the subtropical jungles of Samara. Extremely difficult to spot as it appears to the untrained eye like common mud. It's thought to be impossible to catch and very dangerous. Yes, it blends in with the jungle floor. Unsurprisingly, it's become the subject of many local myths. Some have even described it as an angry forest spirit, or a manifestation of the forest itself. I once heard a story about a whole village disappearing overnight, without a trace. Can you imagine that? Just a large patch of mud where the settlement was. Whole area is completely abandoned now. Locals won't even go near it. They swear the mud writhes and occasionally grows strange shapes. Jungles, villages, mud. He better not be wasting your time. I'm getting there, officer. You see, the Semper Ma has also evolved a curious defensive mechanism. When threatened...
Traditionally, after the death of a village leader, the bereaved are supposed to cut off a segment of their own fingers. What makes it really disturbing is the fact that they bite off bits of their children's fingers too. Even babies. Imagine that. I'm getting there. See, the practice is derived from Semenese finger counting. Each segment of the finger represents one hour, so they count up to twelve with one hand, disregarding the thumb, of course. By removing one segment from their fingers, they remove the corresponding hour from their life. That's what they believe, anyway. No, no. <laughs> There is a discrepancy between how these Semenese tribes count and how they tell time. As I explained, they count up to 12 on their fingers, but they divide the day into 15 parts. But that's a whole other discussion. One you absolutely don't have time for. Let's be done with this idiocy. Oh, well, this is embarrassing. But I'm really not sure what else to tell you. I don't know what to tell you, officer. I got all my information straight from Truth Hunt. If you can't believe a radio program called Truth Hunt, who can you believe? This guy has proved to be a dead end. A dissatisfied growl in your abdomen. But the hard endure and the true kingsman keeps searching. Vions, Bruder. The night is darkest before the dawn. Oh, so that's what the RCM in Martinez is about. Great, great to hear someone's finally taking care of that. So you do know something about it? No, no. Nothing. He was some kind of mercenary. But everyone here knows that. I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it. That's all. He's not feeling very comfy in his clothes, is he? Strange. He didn't kill him or anything. But there's something going on here. My mug? Why would you think that? His eyes widen at the sight of the mug. He's seen it before, all right. Oh, no, that's not... Why would I be calling to a broken mug? Okay, okay, I admit it. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry, officer. You're not going to find me, are you? Whew. Thank you. You won't regret this. I won't use another man's property to dump my garbage ever again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. I know a guy who works with the trash collection services. CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Bohemians run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgraced? No need for the histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. Officer, please. 
Let me explain. It's not like that. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? Then I came out to clean up the rags, because no one else would. I put them into the whirling's trash, along with a broken muck, admittedly. Okay. I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well, I threw the mug there and the clothes too. Right. It was just civic duty. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. Armor? No. I, I mean, yes. Of course. I know he was wearing armor, but I don't know anything about it. An infant could see he's not telling the truth, but he's too scared to admit more wrongdoing. There's something going on here. You should observe him more closely after this topic is concluded. I hope I can help your investigation in my small way. No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way. But I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. What does he do then? This feels like a good opportunity to dominate him. Oh, this and that. Officer, I would never. I just didn't want to bore you with unnecessary detail. I work as a special courier. You know, urgent deliveries, overnight deliveries, deliveries to out-of-the-way locations. Oh, I don't know the contents, officer. Part of my job is discretion. He's trying too hard to seem untroubled by your question. The rigidity in his posture gives him away. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Besides, dealing drugs isn't for people like me and you, officer. No! Nothing like that. I leave that to companies with hundreds of years of tradition in arms manufacturing. No need for an amateur like me cutting in. What do I look like? A pansy? Besides, that kind of cavorting goes against the community values that would strengthen our city. You're a simple cop asking a simple question. He can't beat around the bush much longer. Okay, fine. You got me. I'm a special topping pie delivery courier. You heard me. I deliver topping pies. It's temporary. I'm looking for another job. Not many jobs for good men out there these days. They're wheat free and vegan and huge. He's thinking of a way to gain some advantage from his embarrassing situation. That's basically it. I'm a pie delivery man. How about we change the subject? I'm satisfied. Are you satisfied? Because I am. Not many Seolites here, or anywhere, other than Sale. I meant no offense, truly. Do you remember how, when we met Measurehead and I said the next races will be a really good one? Well, this is that racist. I don't know who that is, but all I meant was there are not many Seolites around here. No, no problem at all. Sounds like some conspiracy topic. You might be able to discuss it with him when the lieutenant isn't here. If you can remember it. Return without the lieutenant. For this, your balance organ thinks it's a waste of time. Are we? I mean, officers. That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together as if something is ready to 
rip out from underneath. It sounds like he's wearing some kind of armor under his clothes. You can't tell it's there just from looking at him. Probably stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was... I was ashamed of what I did. And I didn't want you to know. We're not detecting falsehoods, sire. He's gearing up to admit the truth. Gary! What's going on? Later, Morale. I've got apologizing to do. No. You've got explaining to do. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it is in your hands, smelling of his sweat. But so, so light to hold, like a bag of cotton. Everyone was picking those pieces off him, and I was watching them do it. And they'd scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. So I went there to take out the trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground, him swinging up there, and... I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought, he's a foreigner. They all say he wasn't from here. Only the caress was left. So I stripped it off him. It was early in the morning. No one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh, same wiring. Behind you, a ruined residential building looms over the reeds, shielding them from the wind. They rustle confidently in tune with the pitter-patter of the rain. Locusts are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. You see no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. Big surprise. Anyway, one down, three to go. I meant no offense, just...
A familiar apparatus lies among the reeds, another one of Morel's traps, weighed down by stones to keep it in place. The reeds shake sadly in the coastal breeze, weighed down by rain. They seem to be waiting for something. This trap is also full of panicked locusts. No sign of any cryptozoological beast inside. Another empty trap. Of course. Noted. This is the trap Morel just set. Checking it over, he said, is just a technicality. But the reeds by the abandoned campsite hiss and shake in the lazily falling rain. It's good the cryptozoologists left. This isn't a very cozy place to stay night after night. Nothing but locusts in this trap as well. Definitely no cryptozoological monstrosity. Empty as all of them. One more of these and we're done. Of course, noted. Broken stalks seem like a rebuke. The sound of the city hums in the east. The trap feels light and silent as you pick it up. Something is different here. No locusts. No phasmid either, but still. Well, debate worked on something. This doesn't mean it was a reed monster, though. Unless you see one in there. I just see an empty trap. The netting is a little untidy, messier than the others. Like someone or something picked up the trap and shook it before dropping it back down on the ground. Anyway, that's for the cryptozoologists to figure out now. We are not cryptozoologists. We are cops.
The waves are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. Simmer down. Simmer down, bastards. Why does she care about the waves so much? What is it with waves and fishermen? We need to be out there with them. Fishing, making a living. So I asked them to accommodate me. But until that happens, I can try to assist you the best I can. So, what will it be, officer? It's getting late, and it's raining. Time to call it a day. Good night, officer. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. 